all inclusive? Does it reject anyone? Okay. As long as you uh, do your best to abide by the rules, you wind up being a better person. That's more than I can say about the club that I, was it, uh, Planet Fitness. How many of you know that exercise machines don't work? <laughs> Got a house full of them, programs and everything. They don't work. You got to work them, I guess. Such it is in the kingdom of God. Such it is being part of the kingdom of God. I'm going to go on this evening talking about the purpose of holiness. And um, if you weren't here last week, suffice it to say that holiness is the fuel for your anointing. It's the power by which you do the impossible. And that's what a spirit-led life is all about. It's not what you look like and what you talk about and um, how you behave yourself. That's a result of holiness. Some people got it backwards. They try to look the part without being the part. And that's just legalism. And that makes us bitter people because we try to become something on the inside by an outward exercise that's impossible. It's impossible to do. You know, God made Adam a living soul. Uh, uh, he made him from the dust of the ground. Looked like it. Had all the moving parts. But it wasn't until God breathed into him the breath of life that he became a living soul. Ezekiel, the valley of dry bones. He spoke to the bones. He spoke to the sinew. But it wasn't until breath from the inside filled those individuals that they became alive. We can look Pentecostal. We can look apostolic. We can, we can have all the outward appearance of being in the image, likeness and image of God. But if there's not the breath of God on the inside of us, we just look and we're just a corpse. We are a Pentecostal corpse without the spirit of the holy, the holy spirit of God on the inside of us. And, you know, we take that word holiness and people have turned it into a club that has really, I don't mean like a club, I mean like a club that has scared the daylights out of humanity. The scripture says, follow peace with all men. And holiness. But notice it said follow peace first. He said speak the truth. But he gave us some parameters to speak it in, right? He said speak it in love. Why? Because people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And I believe that the enemy, and we've aided him, Somewhat, I say we, I'm talking about uh, religion as a whole, have aided the enemy in turning holiness into a, a fearful concept and just something that's not at all. Uh, if you weren't here last week, go back and watch last week's message when you get home. Holiness is a power within you to do what you want to do. How many of you have giftings? 
Y'all got them. He gave them to you because he placed you in the body and he gave you a gift so you'd be profitable to the body. So you have a gifting. Whether you realize it or not, you've got one. It may not have manifest itself. We may not have developed it, but we have it. Holiness is the power that imparts that gift from you to others that makes that gift operate. Because holiness is setting ourselves apart from the world and its values. Well, duh. I don't want to identify with the world, do you? If I identify with the world, uh, when he comes back, he might not recognize me. <laughs> Amen? Please, please help me out here. I, I, I'm, I'm heavy tonight, okay? I've got a lot on my plate. And I'm not going to beat you up with holiness, okay? It's, it's not a club in my hand. It's a gift that God gave the church. It's a beautiful gift, an invaluable gift that God gave the church. It's a spirit of being set apart from the world and being dedicated to God. That's holiness. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Absolutely. I don't live a life that is destructive physically, morally, spiritually. When I was in the world, that's what I did. How about you? We lived a life that was destructive morally, physically, spiritually. Well, I set myself apart from that. I don't want to do that no more. I want to be alive. I want to be alive unto God. Amen? I want to be dead to my flesh. I want to be dead to this world. I want to be dead to its values. I want to be dead to its lusts. I want to be dead to its temptations. They're there. The pleasures of sin are there for a season. And they appeal to this fleshly body. But you know what? They're destructive to this body. They're destructive to our lives. They're destructive to our sense of success. Was it Rockefeller or one of them said, what would it, he was dying. What would it make to make you happy? What would it take to make you happy? One more dollar. Really? How many one more dollars does it take to make you happy? Never enough. However, godliness with contentment is great gain. So if I set myself apart from this world, I won't push myself in a rat race that is never going to satisfy me. And he was a lot older than you guys, and I know at this age we're like, dude, if I could just make some money. That guy was a lot older than me and you. And he had more money than we will ever have, all of us. And he still wasn't satisfied doesn't that? Oh, I would be. Yeah, because you're a whole lot more smart than Rockefeller was. So holiness is that mindset that sets us apart from that destructive character and those destructive drives and then sets us apart unto God where there is pleasures at his right hand. And I'm completely fulfilled. Pastor, don't take a lot to fulfill you, does it? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. But I, I'm, I'm old enough to realize that doing stuff and experiencing things and having stuff is not fulfilling. But there is nothing more fulfilling than being in the perfect will of God. There is nothing more fulfilling. It doesn't matter what's going on or what's happening. You cannot take away the sense of fulfillment when you make a difference in somebody's life. The Holy Ghost makes a difference in somebody's life through you. I mean an eternal difference. I buried two ladies this year already. that God enabled me somehow to play a small part 
and changing their eternal well-being. That was a sad, those, that was a sad funeral. I don't mind telling you. Broke my heart. Today I was sitting in the diner with my wife and I was just, you know, my mind was in idle. And I saw this little white-haired, short, white-haired lady get up and, and walk towards the door. And I smiled and started to get up. It looks so much like Sister Lynn. Yeah, it hurt. I had to blink my eyes and grit my teeth for a minute. But then on the other hand, I realized that the grace of God made an eternal difference in the lives of those two ladies. You can't take that away from me. You can't take that away whenever God does something through you, through the spirit of holiness that resides on the inside of you. Went to get a job. And Sister Terry said, why are you here? <laughs> I've got daughters that all of a sudden decided they wanted to be nurses. And you know what nursing school costs? So I had to come get a second job. And we talked for about five minutes, and she smiled sweetly and looked at me, and she said, you're not here for a job. You're here for me. She said, I'm not where I need to be with God. And God sent you here for me. Not because I'm so special, but because I'm trying to let the spirit of holiness operate in my life. And I'm not looking for things in this world that are going to benefit me temporarily. Sanctify yourself and be holy, for I the Lord your God, for I am the Lord your God. Hebrews 12, 13, and 15. Make straight the path for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So if you're doing something wrong, all you got to do is get back in the way. All you got to do is get away from that and get, if you're, doing, if you're doing something that's wrong, stop it. I'll put you in a box and bury you in the backyard. Do you remember that? Where, where did that come from? <laughs> if you don't remember that, just let that go. That was a story or something. Just stop. And start doing what you are supposed to do. Get out of the way that's got thorns that is going to cause you to be lame in life. And get back in, get back in to holiness. That's an incredible thing about God. Just because you got messed up and just because you got dirty, it doesn't mean that you can't get clean again. That's a beautiful thing about holiness. It's separating yourself from the world. So I fell down and I got dirty. I don't roll around in the mud. I get back up and I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. I repent. I get back on the sidewalk of straight and narrow and I go along doing, walking down the road of holiness. Well, you're not holy anymore. Uh, yeah, I am. You failed. Yeah, I did. So? If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse me and forgive me from all unrighteousness. So I messed up. Hold that over my head, and the enemy's going to hold it over your head when you mess up. Because you're going to mess up. Rejoice not against me, my enemy, if I fall. No, when I fall. And if I'm judgmental towards you and your walk with God when you fall, then guess what? I open myself to the same judgment when I mess up. See, there's that legalism of holiness, using like a club. No, it's a spirit of God that is inclusive, not exclusive. Make straight the paths for your feet. Let, you, let it be healed, Hebrews 12 and 13. Follow peace with all men. So it doesn't matter how I live? <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. 
and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I, I want to walk holy before him. I want to live holy before him. I want to see him. I don't, I don't know about you, but I've got to hear him say, well done. And the only way I can hear him say well done is to allow the spirit of holiness to work in me. Allow myself to be separate from the world and be separated and dedicated unto God. Looking diligently lest any man fail the grace of God. You know how I fail the grace of God? I don't allow the spirit of God to fix what's wrong in me. I do not allow the grace of God to build me up. I don't allow the Holy Spirit to edify me. And you know how I don't allow the Spirit to edify me? I don't spend time with it more than just at church. If all I do is eat good on Sunday and Wednesday and I pig out through the week, I'm not going to make much of a difference in my appearance, am I? Or in my lifestyle or in my health. See, holiness is not just what I look like and act like when I'm at church. Holiness is what I eat at home. If I got a, if I got a freezer full of pizza, but I eat salad when I come to church, now y'all understand what I'm talking about. I'm not speaking Greek here, am I? If I go home and I live like a hellion at home, or I don't live holy at home, and all I do is live holy at church, I'm not making much difference in my life. And I'm not going to make much king difference for the kingdom of God here at church. You know where I'm going to make the most difference for the kingdom of God? Outside these four walls. So I've got to allow the spirit of holiness to follow me from the house of God into my house, in your, into your sanctuary. And that spirit of holiness needs to be renewed in me on Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. So when I come on Sunday, I don't need Brother Lashley to pray me through. I'm ready to pray somebody else through. And Thursday, when things happen on the job and God wants to perform a miracle, I don't have to fast and pray for 30 days in order to get in the right spiritual frame of mind for it to happen. You understand where I'm coming from. This is the spirit of holiness. Oh, Pastor, I, I thought it was what we looked like, what we dressed like, what we talked like. Yeah. That's how it manifests itself on the outside. If I will eat the right foods on the inside, I won't have a size 38 waist on the outside. Isn't this crazy how these physical applications actually work spiritually? If I'll give myself a steady diet of the Word of God, and I'll quit giving myself a steady diet of the influence of this world, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be ungodly. It doesn't have to be sinful. It could be empty carbs. That's what happened to Solomon until he finally did go wrong. You know why Solomon went wrong? He filled himself with empty carbs. He never said no to himself. And eventually the Bible says his love of his many wives turned his heart from God. But if you read this, the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, I didn't say no to myself in anything. I ate pizza every day. I, whatever, whatever, my, whatever I wanted, I went after. Whatever I wanted. What happened to the young man that knelt before God and said, I don't know how to go in and come out before your great people. Show me your ways. Teach me, God. That's a spirit of holiness. And in that spirit of holiness... The presence of God came down so strong when he had made room for God, that beautiful temple, and he made that incredible prayer, that 
beautiful prayer, that beautiful dedication. He meant every word, Brother Jeremy, he said. He meant every word of it. And when he got finished and he walked out of the house of God, it created a vacuum, and the presence of God descended in that place, and the priests could not go in and perform their duties because the presence of God, was so, the spirit of holiness was so real and so rich. I wonder what would happen if we became that humble before God, and we made room in our life just for God, and we dedicated everything in our life to the work of God and to the spirit of God, to the anointing of God, and there was nothing left in our temple that didn't dedicate itself to God. It wasn't consecrated to his purpose and wasn't given to the fluid move of the Holy Ghost. I wonder what kind of a vacuum that would leave in our life that would draw the presence of Almighty God in, and the Holy Spirit of God would move and do what men never could do. That's the spirit of holiness. In fact, the spirit of holiness perfected in our life brings us to a place that whenever God said you can't, don't eat pork, don't wear linen and, is it linen and cotton at the same time? And gave some other off the wall. Seem, seemingly off the wall. You, you know what I'm talking about, them 613 laws? Some of them I stand there and scratch my head at. And Canaan can come by and say, you know what? <laughs> you really can mix linen and cotton. It's not going to, like, explode if you put it on your body. And pork, that's the other white meat. And on a smoker, whoo! You see, holiness is about obedience and separation. I think I found the first holiness standard in the Bible. And it don't make sense. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to those that received it. And as a result, they were talked out of their anointing. Of every tree in the garden you can partake of freely, except the first holiness standard. Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why? It looked good to make one wise. It looked just like all the other fruit. Man, I'm just messing up my lesson here tonight. I was really hoping to get somewhere. It didn't make sense. In fact, it didn't so much make sense that the enemy could come along. A snake could talk. And it didn't take Eve by surprise. Are you, really? I wonder if the dogs and the horses and the camels and all the others talked. This isn't Narnia. The snake talked and said, did God say? And she looked upon the tree. Well, somebody help me. There was three things there. It was the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life, if you divide it down. But it looked good for food. It looked good to make one wise. And there was another thing in there. I haven't, I haven't read it lately. And so the enemy could appeal to her humanity it wasn't humanity that drew the line. It was deity. That holiness standard didn't make sense to Eve. And so the enemy could say, he won't die. Hogwash. But if she had had a spirit of holiness in her heart, she said, you know what, I may not understand it, but I am separated unto God. 
My inward attitude will take care of my outward limited understanding. Oh, boy, he's getting ready to hit on standards. I can feel that. Would you please relax? That is not going to happen until a Saturday. If you think, I'm going to let some of you take snippets of my message on holiness and beat the United Pentecostal Church up with it, you're out of your mind. I've watched it happen too many times. If you want to know what this church believes and what it stands for, I'll let you know what Saturdays that we're going to be talking about it, and you can be there. So now you can breathe a sigh of relief. And you can come to every Wednesday night service. Holiness is not just how I behave and what I will look like on the outside. That is important. But that in and of itself is legalism. Holy, holiness begins with a desire to fully please God from my heart. Holiness... Begins with a desire to please God. Not Satan. Well, I don't want to please the devil. Or myself. How many of you know the three battles that you're going to face? Satan, secularism, and self. You're going to fight those three till you make it home. Say them with me. Satan, secularism, that's this world, and self. My own desires, my own thoughts, and you're going to have to fight them in order to please God because nobody wants to please Satan. But what we don't realize is that ourself and Satan are confederate against our salvation. The sooner we understand that, Paul said, in me, that is in my flesh, is no good thing. Would you say that with me? In my flesh is no good thing. Do you believe that? Then we got to get out of the flesh. And every time I read something in the Word of God and I go, huh, I have to realize, you know what? If I don't understand it, it's me. It's not God. It's me. You know, there's a lot of things... I, Elder Ray, the more I know about God, the more I realize I don't. It's not the things that I don't understand about God that bother me. It's the things that I do understand about God and I don't like that get me in trouble. <gasps> Pastor, there's things about God that you don't... Yeah. I'm human. And my flesh says, huh, don't learn me that. Don't teach. I know it's good for me that it don't feel good to me. Yeah, later. How many of you realize that tomorrow never comes? How many of you know that? I'll do it tomorrow. No. Now faith. Okay, I got to get going. I want to fully please God in my life. This inward, inward sanctification will bring about an outward manifestation so infused with grace and mercy that none will consider it offensive in my life. The only people to which Jesus was legalistic and offensive were the religious hypocrites that used holiness to demean others. I mean, they brought a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. Now, today, we're like, so? Right? Paul said, such were some of you. But that wasn't the case back in the day. I believe such were some of them, but they hid it really good. Else, how did they know where to find the woman? And where was the guy? Poor gals are always the ones that suffer. It 
it was the scribes and the Pharisees that he called whited supplicus. It was a religious people that he said, you put burdens on people that are too heavy to bear and you won't lift one finger to help them. Oh, God help us. Do you realize that there's going to be men and women that come into this auditorium through, this, through the revival and the outpouring of the Spirit of God and it's going, your spirit of holiness is going to influence them. Please don't allow it to injure them. The problem with second generation Pentecostals is we didn't look like that outwardly. Well, most of us. BKs were the worst, right, bro? <laughs> I saw a picture of you the other day. <laughs> I almost sent it to you. <laughs> he sent me one the other day. He said, where'd your hair go? <laughs> hair today, gone tomorrow, right? You and I are going to have to get a true spirit of holiness to influence those that walk through the doors and not injure those that walk through the doors. Christ was never injurious. To those that were hurting, he was just healing and helping. Now, he did touch him, heal him. That woman uh, caught in the act of adultery, he said, where are your accusers? She said, I have none, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. There is a holy side to God. There is a coming out and being separate. But we can teach that as Jesus did in such a loving way, non-condemning, non-judgmental way, that they will begin to love God and love his holiness. It's his holiness and purity that draws us, right? Holiness means to be set apart from sin and the world's values, dedicated to God, His will, and watch this, the continual process of sanctification. If all I got to do is watch how short it is, how tight it is, uh, how modest it is, you know, bro, there's a limit to how holy I can get on the outside. But holiness doesn't come from without. There is no limit to the road of sanctification. In fact, you and I will not be holy inwardly until he calls us home. And he finishes that process of sanctification called glorification in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. But you and I have to be committed not to just an outward look, but to an inward look commitment. I'm not going to let a spirit be in my life. I'm not going to let an attitude reside in my heart. I'm not going to let a temptation reside in here that's going to cost me my anointing. And so I'll continue work towards sanctification. And let me say, if God has brought something up in your spirit, please don't say I'm working on that. Get her done. Just do it. I've pastored long enough to watch people know that God was working on something in their life. God, the spirit of holiness was working in their life, but they were resistant to the spirit of holiness. And they grieved the grace of God. They frustrated the grace of God. That's what, that's what holiness is. Holiness is the grace of God at work in our life. And I watched them say, I'm not ready yet. I can't do that yet. Listen, you never could. You were never able. If you could, you wouldn't need God, right? I just I just. I'm not there yet. Yeah, you are. If God's dealing with you about it, you're there. Well, maybe not you, but you and him are there. And I've watched people 
frustrate the grace of God and quench the grace of God out of their life and lose out. And have looked me in the eye and said, I know this is what God's dealing with me about. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm just not there yet, Pastor. What, what we say when we say that is, I know better than God. Let me, let, let, let me just say this. Eternity, when you weigh everything in the balance of eternity, there is no competition. There is no comparison. Lazarus, not the one that died, well, yeah, I guess he did die, but Lazarus that laid at the, the gate of the rich man was an honorable man, obviously. He died of his sores, of his condition. The rich man died in his condition. And both of them went to separate places. The rich man being in torment lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham, Jesus says. And immediately he would have traded everything that he had to be there. Somebody once said, you will never give up anything to go to heaven that you won't have to give up to go to hell. Pastor, you, really? He was doing so good. Look, I want you to go to heaven. Do you remember that slogan that was going around? They even made bracelets about it, stickers about it, WWJD. You know, that's a real thing. If there's something going on in my life and the Lord convicts me about it or points at it and I don't say, okay, let's fix this. And I immediately do everything it takes to get with him and get this fixed in my life. Pastor, you've just taken away all the excuses no, I'm trying to get you close to God. I'm telling you, there is a miraculous power in the spirit of holiness that if you and I wouldn't hold on to our human values and our human desires and we would truly separate ourselves unto God, we separate ourselves from the world, but we kind of get stuck here in the middle between God and the world. It's called self. And God can't work through us whenever we're full of ourself. Well, I like this. You're not your own. Well, I don't like that. You're not your own. Quite frankly, I'm glad I'm not my own because I was sold unto sin. I got myself into so much trouble. I got myself into such a, a sin debt. You was probably perfect and never did that. But I got myself in such a sin debt, I was so glad when God come along and purchased me and paid my debt. And now I'm not my own. Because if I was my own again, I'd get myself right back in the same spot I was in before he purchased me. This I'm talking about holiness, brothers and sisters. It's a spirit that desires to please God regardless. better get back on my notes. We got to be given to the continual process of sanctification. You never arrive. I never arrive. God reveals stuff to me. Yeah, I hate to go on an extended fast. Fasting, I, I don't know about you, but fasting, it seems to me, is where God starts revealing Jeffrey for who he really is. I come out of an extended fast, Sister Jamie, and I feel backslid. Maybe y'all feel empowered. Like Jesus, led by the Spirit. 
full of the power. No, I come out of a fast feeling, oh my God, what does he even see in me? That's why I do it frequently. Well, as much as Bishop will allow. Because I want to take a clearer look at myself without the eyes of self-justification. Because you and I are the best self just we're the best justifiers in the world. If you want it, you can figure out how to buy it. If you have to sell your blood, do you know they buy that stuff? You could make good money selling your blood. Don't do it, life's in the blood. I'm kidding. I just can't stand it when they come at me with that needle. We are the best justifiers. Well, this is in my life because. I tell you why. You don't want to hear it. It's because I'm full of myself. Not you, me. Y'all are holy, sweet, pure people of God. I got problems. No, I got one big problem. Jeffrey. I would to God that every situation that come up in my life I didn't react, but I would be proactive and say, God, what do you think about this? God, how would you have me react? I am convinced that if I reacted the way God would react, if I really took that WWJD as more than a slogan and an excuse to wear a bracelet, You know, they say anything more than a four-second pause makes people awkward. If you look at people for more than four seconds, it, things start getting awkward if you don't say something. If I would really say, God, I don't, this does not appeal to me personally. I don't like it at all, matter of fact. However, I remember doing things that I did like or not doing, not doing things that I should like. I remember where it got me. And God, I'm not my own. And I really, oh, this, this decision, I, I really want to make this decision this way. But I wonder, Brother Ralph, where, what decisions I would make and how much more empowered my life would be if every decision I made, I knew God was pleased with. You ever think about that? Every decision I make. Have you ever made decisions uh, based on how it affected you? And you felt justified in it, right? Because I'm just protecting myself. Where would we be if Christ would have protected himself? I've had to go back and reanalyze some decisions that I've made, Brother Ralph, and say, God, was, that, was you in that or was that just me? Was that me and my holy, spiritual, Pentecostal, righteous indignation? God said, yeah, your righteousness looks like filthy rags to me. That's holiness. That's the spirit of holiness. It's a continual process. Because, Brother Keith, I have learned something about me. I can win the battle today and lose the same joker tomorrow. I can... Agree with God today and next week come up with another reason why, you know what? I... So this is a continual road of sanctification. 
Paul said, I keep under my body. He, he said, I die daily. You remember that? Well, first he said, I am crucified with Christ. Boy, that sounds really good, don't it? Except our flesh has resurrection power. It don't wait three days like Christ did. That joker wakes up sometimes about the time we walk away from the, from the altar, doesn't it? Then he said, um, I die daily. That sounds pretty good too, but I mess up more than once daily. And finally he just said, I keep my body under subjection. It's a continual process, this holiness process, until God takes over my mind and I don't judge uh, through the flesh any longer. And, I, I, you know, you can tr program your mind. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ can dwell within us and we don't have to be reactionary. We can be holy. This may surprise you, but Sister Tysinger and I have a, a similar fault in our character. We both have road rage. Yes, you do. If you would hold a sign up that says cruise control, that's road rage. Justification working right here. <laughs> there is a conspiracy against me when I get on the interstate. Thank God for Toyota's radar cruise control. Because now I don't have to turn my cruise control off when somebody who is not thinking with their right brain pulls up ever so slowly when I'm right behind a semi and just sits there in the left lane and won't pass me and won't let me pass them. Let me have an amen. amen. Get out of the left lane. Forgive me, Lord. God's been working on me about that. To the point, Brother Lashley, a while back, my wife said, you know what, Jeff? You don't, you, don't, you don't say anything when they block you in anymore. I said, I know, but I think it. <laughs> if they could, oh, if you could read my mind, what a tale my thoughts would tell. about where you got your license and what your IQ must be and where your head, where are your brains? You didn't know that about me, did you? I said, you know, baby, I want to get to a place where I don't even think it. I don't even think about taking that sign. Oh, how about this one? They pass you and slow down. So you pass them thinking, okay. And they pass you again and slow down. You are so fortunate I'm not God of the universe. I've told my wife, why, Brother Lash, why does that irritate me? Now, don't judge me. You got stupid stuff, too. But I wish to goodness that I had diplomatic immunity because I would pit maneuver that joker. Do you know, I had a brother one time. Oh, he don't know how close he got to being blessed of the Lord. He said, you know what, Pastor, I'm driving down the road sometimes. He said, and that guy turns his blinker on to get in front of me. I go, uh-uh, not in front of me, and I speed up. I went, <gasps> you. It was you. Now, I made a lot of joke, a lot of jest. 
about a spirit that I really, pastor, is that, <laughs> really, that's what you deal with? Yeah. It's not the spirit of Christ. And if I allow that one to stay there, it won't take long, and another one will tag along right beside it. And eventually, I will so crowd out the image of Christ in my life that people will really see who Jeffrey is. And you don't want to see that joker. So this road to sanctification is not for the new convert alone. It's especially for you and I. If you've got an argumentative spirit, that needs to go. If you've got an unsubmitted spirit, it's got to go. If you've got a spirit of anger, it's got to go. Well, Pastor, that's just, that's who I am. No, that's who you were. Any characteristic in my life that doesn't represent Christ has got to go. Oh, pastor, come on, we're just human. Uh Uh-uh. You you may be in the world, but you're not of the world. You may have flesh, but you're not led by the flesh. Old things passed away. Old things become new. The apostle Peter said, we now have, we are partakers of a divine nature. If you're naturally argumentative, Jesus wasn't that way. It's got to go. If you're naturally a negative person, Jesus is not that way. It's got to go. If you're naturally a suspicious person, Jesus was not that way. It's got to go. You notice all those things we um, justify? Well, I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't chew, and Brother Arnold says I don't swim with bow-legged women. We categorize stuff. But holiness, holiness, it gets those things out of us so that the purity of Almighty God, be thou holy. Why? Because holy God wants to flow through you and I and not be tainted by Jeffrey. So as God begins to correct you internally, How many of you know that I am not a jello sheriff? Very, if I call you into my office, most often I I need to ask you your opinion about something or tell you thank you for something. Uh, Oh, God, I'm going to the pastor's office. That's why I started giving kids candy out of my office. Yeah, I asked, case in point. My dear sister, can we do dinner next week? Oh, God. What now? I said, Ted and I have kids together. (laughs) We're family, remember? Is that okay? Most time, I'm going to pray that God deals with you. Because a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. But if God will convince you, you'll come in my office and say, Pastor, I need to talk to you. What? About what? You're kidding me. Jesus, finally. No. That's holiness. When you and I pray to the point to where God starts dealing with us about something, we realize, whew, that's got to get out. And if you need to talk to a pastoral fan, a pastoral staff member, you don't come dreading it. Can I tell you, like, I, you're not my kids. You're God's kids. But I told my children this. Don't ever be, a come, be afraid to come talk to me. Now, you... You parent however you want, okay? This is, this is how I parented, and this is how I pastor. You come tell me anything you want. 
And if you truly want help, you truly want it fixed, I'm not going to come down on you for it. We're just going to try to figure out how to fix it and get out of this mess. If I find out about it first, and you're a, oh, Dad knows about it. Dad, please. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. But if you're really wanting to get out of it, you come tell me anything you want. I don't care how bad it is. Let me tell you, I had to pull some pretty good poker faces. But those are my kids. I'm not there to hurt them. I'm there to help them. As your pastor, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not even here to discipline you. Hear me. I'm not your disciplinarian. I'm not your daddy. He is. Him and life will discipline you enough. My job is to put you back together again and get you back on the road of holiness. So if you got an issue, if you got something you need to talk about, Get a hold of us. I've done everything I can to p pass that on to the rest of the pastoral staff. We are not here to point fingers. We're not here to lay blame. We're not here to cause you to feel bad. You do that enough already. We're okay. It happened. How do we fix this? Where to from here? You're still valuable in the eyes of God. I tell people every time they come talk to me, and I don't care what they tell me, I tell them I don't think that much less of you. In fact, you just raised your, my elevation. You just raised an elevation of what I think about you because you dared to come through that door and admit, I need help. That's the spirit of holiness. How many of you know that not one of us is perfect? How many of you know that sometimes we like our imperfections? but we don't like being imperfect. Somebody shoot that clock. You know, you wouldn't be enticed if it didn't appeal to you. It wouldn't be a temptation if you didn't desire it. Do you know there's no sin in being tempted? There's no sin in being tempted. You're human. COVID, is, COVID has my brains, but James talks about it. I believe it's James. He said, a man drawn away of his own lust. And he talks about temptation. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, the end result is sin. Whenever you give in to the temptation, sin doesn't happen as long as you're being tempted. The, you remember the man Christ Jesus was tempted, yet without sin. I have to remind him every once in a while I'm not the man Christ Jesus, Lord, and I, I mess up. So don't beat yourself up because you're tempted, it simply means you're human but let the spirit of holiness work on the inside of you and resist the temptation because I desire to be holy more than I desire to give in to this temptation. Everybody that's been on a diet has come to that realization at some point. I want to be skinny more than I want the snicker. Obviously, I haven't got there yet but I promise you I've got there in the spirit. Maybe I should say I'm getting there. Take heed. Any man that stands, thinks he stands, take heed. Lest you fall. Realize that you're weak. Realize that there's weakness. And that's what the spirit of holiness is there for. I believe that God allows us to be so weak so we have to stay so in tune with him to stay holy. Because if I was strong enough, I wouldn't need to stay in tune with God. Okay, I'm done. Well, I'm not finished, but. Philippians 3, 12 through 16. Can I read this, this to you? 
not as though I'd already attained. How many of you know you're not there yet? Either we're already perfect. How many of you know you're not there yet? But that don't stop me from trying. I follow after. That word follow after means I'm not there yet. I'm chasing something. I'm following something. I follow after that I may, that I'm empowered. Yes, you may. No, you may not. Right? That is a, a, uh, that is a phrase of permission. I follow after holiness that I may because if I don't follow after holiness, the permission is not there. That I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, God said, be holy. I'm not holy yet, but I'm trying so that I can get there. Brethren, I count my, not myself to have apprehended, but I don't give up. I don't quit. I don't say, well, that's just me. No, Christ in you. Christ formed in you. But this one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind. It do us good to forget our... Oh, you think I'm going to say failures. It do us good to forget our successes because sometimes we just sit there on our laurels. Well, I'm better than I used to be. And all of a sudden, we've ceased walking this road of holiness. And when you stop moving, when the cloud and the pillar of fire start moving, you're comfortable there, and we quit moving because, well, it's just comfortable here. Let me tell you what, the provision, the anointing, the security, the safety, everything follows the the pillar of fire and the, and the cloud. Everything follows holiness. And so you and I have to press on. He said, I count not myself after any but this one thing do. Forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forth into those things which are before. How many of you know that God's got something greater for you down the road? How many of you know that God's got a greater dimension of anointing for you? That's what Paul was saying. I'm pressing for a greater anointing. I'm pressing for the promises that have not yet been given. He says, I press for the mark. I press for holiness. I press to be holy so the power of God can rest upon me. So the spirit of God and the anointing of God will flow through me. I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The New International Version says, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if at some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let's live up to what we've already attained. Let's live up to what we've already attained. Don't you let go on the holiness that you've got. Don't you let go of the separation that you've already attained in your life. That's amazing. That's a foundation you're going to build on. It's not something to let go of, especially as, as guests come in, as new brothers and sisters come in. Don't you let go of who and what you are. It's going to be confusing, but let's go on. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you, God, for the spirit of holiness. God, it sets me apart from the world, but God, it empowers me with power from on high to do the miraculous, to do what you've called me to do. God, it anoints me, Lord, to be fulfilled in your kingdom. Help me, oh God, to have an attitude towards holiness. Help me to have the prop proper desire towards being holy. Lord God, so I desire in everything to please you and that you would be glorified in every aspect of my life. I ask this, oh God, impart unto us this burden, this desire, the revelation of what it means and, and the reward of being holy so that you can be glorified in our life, that your kingdom may flourish, and so that we would walk pleasing before you. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. You're dismissed.